Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Earlier this year, I bought a new PC for the first time in about seven or eight years, and I put together a list of steps that I would need to do to make that transition from the old PC to the new PC as seamless as possible. Now that I got that, I'm, I'm much more prepared for the next time I upgrade, and I want to share this with you so you also have a smooth transition when it comes to getting your files and your applications back on your computer. And the first recommendation that I have for you is make sure you have all your files within a cloud service. All of my important files are in a Dropbox folder and that gets synced across all my computers and it's also in the cloud so I can access it from a browser. And then I switched over from Microsoft products to Google Drive many years ago as well. So I use them for any presentations like this one along with spreadsheets and documents. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you look at files that are outside of that cloud-based structure. So if you have, you know, just the photos or video or some other folder within your um, Windows user folder as opposed to your Dropbox, I would consolidate that into your Dropbox or if you use OneDrive or another service like that. I like to just right click any big important folders like my Dropbox folder and just note the size of it along with doing an inventory of your programs or applications. See how big that is in comparison to your files. Some of your programs might have settings that are set that, you, that you're not going to have if you just install it from scratch on the new PC. So you may need to export those settings or just take note of what you've customized. And, you know, just do this. I would just do this with your most used programs, your top two or three most used programs. Outside of that, you'll be able to fix some of these problems as you encounter them on your new PC. Another thing is I had a couple of programs that you couldn't download the installer easily online because it was a paid product. Like, for instance, I have an old version of QuickBooks. So I have the exe file saved with installation instructions for that then you can take screenshots of your pc like i do my desktop to see how i have my icon set up same thing with the taskbar to see what programs i have pinned you can also do it with your file associations to see which programs open certain types of files so let's take a look at the spreadsheet these are all the big picture steps but i have a few more specific steps that i did within my computer so you can see here, as I was doing this process, I logged my steps here. I had a couple notes here. I also have notes in some of these cells if you hover over them. And then I have my old PC specs. This was before I ended up purchasing a new PC, along with the list of programs here. And I highlighted the ones that I wanted to install, along with ones that I might install. And then the ones that are not highlighted, I'm not going to install them until I need them on the new PC, just because I like to keep things as clean and minimal as possible on a fresh installation. And you can see some of the notes that we went through here, you know, the file inventory. I highlighted in yellow anything related to the old PC, which also is this step here, which I forgot. <laughs> but this is part of the consolidation. I had some um, video files outside of my Dropbox, so I added them into my Dropbox. And then you can see my Dropbox here was about 550 gigabytes. I have a pro plan, which gives me two terabytes of data. So I'm using about a quarter of that. And my programs were about 65 gigabytes. And I have some you know, specific steps in here. Since I deal with web design, there's a hosts file on your website, which links up domain names to IP addresses. You can actually overwrite what is returned by the domain lookup. So that's something that I do. If you're not aware of you know, websites, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. The other thing here is Adobe Creative Cloud. With that monthly service, you're allowed to use that on two computers, I believe. So you have to activate it on your computers. I already have it sub set up on two computers, so I just had to deactivate that on my old PC before I activated it on my new one. And some of these other steps here, we're going to go through in the next slide because that's what we do on the new PC. So after setting up Windows, the first two things that I do are install Google Chrome and sign into my Google profile, which gives me access to all my Google Drive files. And then I do the same thing with Dropbox and install Dropbox on my computer, which syncs up all my files there, which that's a longer process. Like you saw, I had almost 500 gigabytes of data. I had a note in my spreadsheet there with how many files it was, and I think it took about three to four hours for that to sync up. Dropbox now has features which you can use to keep everything on the cloud so you don't have to download everything to your computer. But since I have the hard drive space, I do like having that locally. It just makes it easier if you have to edit something without an internet connection. And then once I'm done with those two programs, I'll install the rest of my apps one by one. I also go ahead and customize File Explorer however I want with my taskbar based on the screenshots that I took and any settings that I logged into that spreadsheet. I'll set my file associations once I have all my applications installed. And then lastly, you want to set up any external devices like your printer. Let's jump back into the spreadsheet again so I can go into some of my more specific details. 
So here's just a few specific settings that I have. With Google Chrome, I set the desktop as the download location. I got a note here with the taskbar to remove it from all my monitors except one. By default, it shows on every monitor and I have three monitors set up. So I just wanted it on my main monitor and I have the setting here, which is in personalization taskbar behaviors. So this is what I'll log like where I change that setting as a note on some of these things. Another example is FileZilla. That's the FTP program I use to transfer files to and from a web server. So for this one, I have this installed on both my Mac and my PC, and I want to sync up the settings. So I have to make what's called a SIM link in order to do that. <laughs> this is the um, method to do it both on Windows and on Mac. This is a command prompt thing. I got a folder on my Dropbox with just background photos. And that's what I use for my Windows backgrounds. So I get that set up by customizing the desktop. And then the last thing that I might do is change some registry files. So I use Notepad++. I actually just released a tutorial on how to use that, which is an advanced version of Notepad. It brings code editing into the fold. It's got a lot more features. It's got a better search and replace. So there's a lot of reasons that you might want to use that instead of Notepad. But one example is I use a custom icon file and I set that within the registry. Another example here that you can see is open with PS, that's Photoshop. By default, I like using a, a really simple photo viewer for JPEG files, but when I right click, I wanna have the option to open within Photoshop. That's something that you can set within the registry. And really, this is the entire process. I just have the year down here in the tab. So I created this in 2021, but I, I actually got my computer in 2022. And then I just created a new tab here, TBD, with my new computer specs. And then next time I upgrade, whenever that is, I'm just going to copy over most of these steps into this and customize it for whatever programs I have installed now. And, you know, whatever future advances there are, I might switch up my process and my workflow and adapt it to that. So there you go. I'm sure a bunch of you are looking into this process before you buy your new PC. So if you found this video helpful, an easy way to support is to go to the link here to browse computer deals on Amazon, websiteprofitcourse.com slash PC. I'll include that in the description below. I am an affiliate of Amazon, so I get a small portion if you do purchase through that. That's where I got my previous computer. I bought a refurbished Dell on Amazon. And the reason I kept it for about eight years is because the specs were really good at the time I bought it. In the last handful of years, I was looking at new computers and the specs weren't all that much different. But eventually it was starting to get slow, mainly opening bigger programs like Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. Those would take like a minute or two minutes to load up. So I decided to move over to a solid state hard drive, which is what I got now. So check that link out. You should be able to find something that fits your needs on Amazon. And if for some reason you don't, you want to custom build it, you can always go direct. And like I previously mentioned, I'm a web designer. I manage websites both for myself and for clients. That is the primary focus of my YouTube channel. And I'd love to teach you to create your first website. I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're probably a computer person. And that's what I was. I, I started just growing up with computers and loved them. And that's how I got into web design. I highly recommend that you buy a domain, create a website, even if it's just for your personal name, a resume kind of website. You'll learn a lot. Just go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. That's where you'll learn WordPress, which is the most popular content management system on the internet. You'll get up to speed in just a few days. I'll send you tutorials. And if you got any questions along the way, just reply to those emails. I'll try and help you out. Last but not least, hit that thumbs up button on this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to get future tutorials. If you went through this process of switching PCs and you went through a step that I missed on here, please let me know in the comments below. I know everybody uses their computer in a unique way, so I'd be interested to see what problems that you encountered during this process and how you solved them. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll link up a couple videos here if you want to keep on learning.